Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. He is worthy to yes, be praised. Yes, he, he sits yes, high and looks low. Yes. He sees everything we're in need of. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. And he gives us our needs. Yes. He will give us the desires of our hearts yes. if we delight ourselves in him. Yes. For he is God and God alone. Yes. He needs no help, but we need his help. Yes. Well, I know he's blessed each and every one of us yes. this past week yes. through our aches and pains, yes. through our yes. troubled times, through the things that we don't want to let go, but we got to let go. For it's our job <laughs> to give ourselves to him faithfully, wholeheartedly. This morning's scripture is coming from the book of Psalm. Amen. Chapter 14. And we're going to be reading in its entirety. I'm going to be reading out of the King James. I like the King James. Sometimes it makes me break out the strongs so that I can understand what it's really saying. Because Webster don't have the same definition. When you have it, say, I got it. I got it. All right. And it reads, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge? Who eat up my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord? There were they in great fear. For God is in the generation of the righteous. Ye have shamed the counsel of the poor. Because the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion. When the Lord bringeth back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. Amen. 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 I feel that the Lord wants me to do a prayer this morning. Give the deacons a break. Amen. We hit you up next week. <laughs> Father God, holy and righteous one, yes. our Savior and our refuge, mm -hmm. our rock and our fortress. Yes. Father God, we thank you, thank you for all the blessings that you have given us. Yes. Father, you sacrificed your life that we may have life abundantly. Yes. That we may dwell in your house, in your mansions yes. that you have prepared for us. And we thank you. Yes. Father God, I stand here before your people. On behalf of your people, I say we repent, Lord. We repent of our sins. For Father, we do try to do us right. Yes. But Father, not only do we try, but we fail. Yes. But truly, we don't fail. We just don't succeed. Yes. So Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus yes. to pour out your spirit upon us. Help us, Father, and give us strength. Yes. Strength, Father, that we may stand boldly for your name. And yes. we may continue to walk in your counsel and not of the ways of this world. For we are not of this world. 
But we are in it to shine light upon this world. And Father, we ask you that the blessings that you bestow upon us, you give us double portion, Lord God, that we may take those blessings and share with others, Lord. Those that have not heard of you, those that have not chose you to be the Lord of their lives. Let us, Father, be an example. For Lord God, you called us ambassadors of Christ. So let us fulfill that obligation. We ask you, Father, to touch those that are sick today. Touch those that have aches and pains, Lord God. Touch those, Father God, that just need your help. Touch us, Lord, in our pockets. Touch us, Lord, on our jobs. Touch us, Lord, as we go on the streets to and from wherever we may go. Keep us in your safety and in your security, Lord. Father, we ask you to touch those that are incarcerated. Touch those, Lord God, that are in the hospital. Touch those, Father God, we come in contact with. Father, you are the holy and righteous one. You are the great I am. You are the Savior. You are our rock. You are the risen King. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the great Almighty. You are our Father, the Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We thank you, Father, for everything that you've done for us in our life up to this point. And anything, Father, that you choose to do for us in the future. We thank you right now for it, Father God. For Father God, I ask for the name of Jesus to touch each and every house, Lord, of yours. Touch it, Father, and let each house, Lord God, grow in the manner that you want it to grow. Touch the people in those houses, Lord God, and let them do what you have them to do. Lord God, send them in the ways that you want them to go. Father, we thank you right now. For Father, you are holy in all that you do. You are magnificent in your ways. For there is no wrong about you. And we ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to continue to shed your spirit abroad. To let each and every one of our hearts, our minds, our soul, and our spirit be receptive unto you. In Christ's name, amen.
the one and all thing.
Cornell and Ann Austin, Lillian Fawcett, Victor Jeffers, Vince Beard, Diane Snipes, Jimmy Petit, and the family and friends of Brother Dewey Bernard Bumpers, as he was killed last week in a car wreck. Mm -hmm. Please keep these people in your prayers. Please add them to your prayer list. May God continue to bless you and your family. Well, amen. I want to thank everyone that sacrificed your sleep last week and went to sunrise, man. Yeah. Over at Children's Chapel. Truly, we had a glorious time. Yeah. The Lord, the spirit was hot. And we had a hallelujah good time. Yeah. Remember, church, only what you do for God will last. Amen. Amen. We're going to do one more song, after which we're going to receive the bread from heaven from our very own pastor. Dr.
on his own. He said, Pastor gonna be there, but he got to get up here to cross. Let my mother be gone. I didn't want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
in the presence of the Lord. Talk to you from the subject this morning. Jesus shows up and shows out. Jesus shows up and Jesus shows out. I want to talk to you from the subject. First of all, the word is out. We know that John pins Jesus as the word of God. Amen. And I want to let y'all know that on Resurrection Sunday, last Sunday, we celebrate his resurrection. Amen. And the word came out of the grave. So I started to talk to y'all about uh, him coming and the word was out. Yes. Secondly, I, thought, I, I had another thought that I wanted to pin this. Then I said, I'm not going to give them a subject. I'm not going to give them a title, Brother Mark. But this one came to me. And I, I started to say, he did just what he said. He was telling them he was coming back. He rose from the dead. And he came back. And he did just what he said. I started to talk about that. I started to talk about amazing God, amazing King. Yeah. He died. Only one I know to ever conquer death. The only one I ever know that can overcome sickness, anxiety, depression, and trouble. The only one that can reconcile families. The only one that can heal your hurt when you are so hurt that money won't help you. People can't help you. Your education can't help you. God still can help you. I start to talk to you about amazing God and an amazing King. But I need to talk to you this morning. He showed me clearly, yeah, that Jesus showed up and he showed out. Before I start, I want to tell you that he's still showing up. And he's still showing up. Yeah. Just when you think not, Jesus shows up. This text starts here uh, at Resurrection, verse 20. Mary Magdalene, y'all know it, right? We talked about it last week. And Sister Mary came running to the grave to see a dead Jesus. But to her chagrin, he was not there. And she said, somebody stole my Lord's body. Then she saw him for who he was. When he called her name Mary, nobody could say it like that. Have you ever had somebody that could call your name like that? You knew exactly who it was that called your name. When Jesus called her name, the one he had healed, the one he had cast seven devils out, she knew it wasn't nobody but Jesus. Then Jesus talked to her and let her know, don't touch me lady, because I'm not there yet. I have some more work to do on this earth. Amen. And then I'm going to send back to my father. He said, but I got an assignment for you. I want you to go tell the disciples that to meet me in Galilee. Because guess what? I'm back. Yeah. Hey, I want you to let them know that I showed up here after resurrection. And I showed up to show out. Can I tell you that? They were in fear. The disciples were. Can I tell you in this text, uh, verse 19, it said the same day. The same day that Jesus resurrected was the first day of the week. Don't read too fast. The Bible is very specific about what it's saying. That first day of the week, it was first Sunday in church. And on that first Sunday, Jesus shows up. Amen. Y'all know what the sermon was? The resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. He talked about the resurrection. And he didn't have to really say it because he was the resurrection. He was the life. That's what somebody before I move on. A lot of times, folk don't need to see your Bible. Folk don't need to see your clock. Folk don't need to know how long you've been in church. All folk need to know is, do you know the Lord? Yeah. And so Mary went to tell them about Jesus who had showed up. And Peter and John, let's go back to the tomb. They raised the tomb, remember? And they looked inside to see what he did. The Bible says that Peter outran John. John outran Peter. I don't know. But when they looked in, the napkin was folded. Amen. And the Jewish custom, napkin was folded. And it's like that now. If ever you're eating in a restaurant and you're not finished with your food, do not take your napkin and put it any kind of way on the table. Because the way they're going to assume you're through with your food. But what you have to do is fold it very neatly, amen, and lay it to the side to let him know I'm coming back. The Bible says when they got there, Jesus wasn't there, but his little cloth was there, amen, and they was folded neatly to let them know I'll be back. <laughs> Y'all hear me? I'm going to show back up, and he shows up on the first Sunday in church. That's for somebody. You need to show up at church. I don't care how bad it gets. I don't care how hard it gets. Souls up. The Bible says they was behind locked doors for fear of the Jews. Now, 
Before you beat them up, they just witnessed Jesus. He's been beaten. He's been whipped. He's been arrested. So I moved from judgment hall to judgment hall. Put on the cross, crucified, basically what we call the electric chair. Took him down and put him in the grave. And so y'all keep saying, Pastor, I'll be with you always. If the police bust in here and take me up out of here, ain't none of y'all gonna follow me out of here. Y'all can get together and say, what do you do? The Bible says Jesus did what? He showed up. The first thing he did was he appeared in front of them. Can I tell you that if you ever get in a bad situation, and if you ever get in a bad way, I want to live in witness that God will show up. Amen. Jesus shows up to them. He steps up to let them know, I am who I am. Look at the hand of the prince in my hand. Jesus came. 
Judah was the twin Thomas. Folks say he died in Thomas. Not really. Because when Jesus said, I'm going to Jerusalem to die, Thomas said, we're going with him. Thomas was ready to fight, you remember? He was ready to live the Lord. Thomas was analytical. Thomas was like you, Brother Cain. Don't just tell me something. I want to know. I want to see it. Amen. Yeah. That's what Thomas was like. Well, y'all like that. You just want to see it. Amen. Amen. Some of them, you got to see it before you see it. No, no, no. I got to, I got to see it to believe it. Amen. Yeah. 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 See it before you see it. He said Thomas wasn't with them. So here it is. That first Sunday. Now we're going to second Sunday. We're in second Sunday. Because 25 said that. And the other disciples were there. Look what they said to Thomas. This is during the week. This is during the week. 24, 25 is during the week. Somebody said during the week. The, the Monday through Friday when we don't ever talk about Jesus on the Sunday, trying to get a hair pick in the house like a talk to him. We ain't thinking nothing about Jesus. And Sunday morning, this is the day the Lord has made our rejoicing glad in Jesus. <laughs> During that week, he said, he said Thomas 1 and 12 was not with them when Jesus came. Yeah. He missed Jesus because he wasn't in church on first Sunday. Oh, I can just stay in the house and worship by myself. I just don't do that church thing. Okay, you keep on doing that. When the Lord said to Satan, not the assembly of yourself together, I think I'm going to listen to him rather than talk. Yeah. Verse 25, the other disciple therefore said unto him, verse 25, look what they say. They said, we have seen the Lord. And the Greek language says, they said, and he, they kept repeating. They ain't just saying, Nick and Hall, we have seen the Lord. They kept on. They turned it down. We turned something to a song. We have seen the Lord. 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 Come on, man. We have seen the Lord. And Thomas was like, man. But he said unto them, they said, I shall see his hands. Because you know what they said. He showed us his hands. He showed us his side. He greeted us with peace. He broke the Holy Spirit in us. We know it was him. Thomas said, they said, I shall see him. And the prince of the nails thrust in his hands aside. He said, I will not believe it. Y'all got it? But I'm going to tell you now that Jesus will show up at your Lord's point. That's what's up about right there. First thing is, he will appear. He will show up. No matter what the obstacle, God will show up. That was the first point, remember? Second point is that the Lord will come at your Lord's point. He'll show up. Showed up in Luke 24, he showed up in two on the Emmaus road who thought all hope was gone. Jesus showed up in Luke 24 and walked with them, went home with them, broke bread with them, did communion with them, and the Bible said he disappeared. He showed up and let them know, yes, I died, yes, they beat me, yes, they whipped me. The Bible said he expounded the scriptures from Moses up until now. Amen. That brother preaching right there. And then when they saw him, they realized who he was. They said, hey, you need to go with us. And he did communion. When he saw communion, they saw his hand. They said, this is the Lord. And when he left, the Bible says in Luke 24, the one looked at the other said, did not our hearts burn? <laughs> yeah, when they showed up, yeah. our hearts began to burn. Yeah. And I tell you now, we showed up Mary Magdalene. That was him showing up to let her know, I am here. Now he shows up to the disciples to let them know, I am here. He shows up to Thomas. But stop right there. Why didn't Thomas believe the disciples? Okay. Mary Magdalene saw Jesus. Yeah. She saw him. We know when she saw him because we read. Yeah. She didn't believe it was him until he revealed himself, right? Mm -hmm. He told her to go tell my boys yeah. that I'm here. Mm -hmm. That I did tell what I said I was going to do. Yeah. When she goes to them, they don't believe her. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. And then when they got ready, and they realized it was him because he did what? He showed up. And show showed up. Yeah. Now they start believing. So when Thomas, when they told Thomas, Thomas said, I don't believe. Yeah. When you leave this church and tell folk how good God is, yeah. what God has done for you in your life, yeah. it will inspire folk, but it won't make them come. Because right. some folk put more on what they're going through yeah. than what God can do for them. That's right. Some folk Focus on their trouble versus what God will do for them. Thomas said, I will not believe. But here it is. Here it is. The whole guts of it. I'm getting ready to go now. I smell fish and I taste chicken. Verse 26 says, after eight days, 
y'all see it? After eight days, you see this car? You know what that means? It's second Sunday. All right. He missed it on first Sunday. But on second Sunday, Thomas said, I might work on go to church. Don't act like y'all ain't been there. You missed first Sunday, you missed second Sunday, you missed third Sunday, and then something hit you, you say, no, folks, Sunday, you know, I'm going to go to church. I just feel like going to church. But Thomas showed up at church. Look what happened. But again, the disciples were inside. This time, verse 26, it said Thomas was with them. You see it? And he was in there, same thing. The door was shut, and Jesus showed up. Listen to me. The doors were shut. The doors was locked. And Jesus showed up. Y'all still don't get it. Y'all still slow. The door was locked. And Jesus showed up. They still slow. The door was locked. And Jesus showed up. All of them slow. Airports, musicians, the door was locked. Preachers and Jesus showed up. All right now. And when he showed up, look what happened. He did the same thing. Can I tell you, folks, I, I always want to know uh, where is the devil and where is it God? First of all, the Lord will never tell you anything that's going to hurt you or harm you. The Lord's never going to tell you anything to make you want to hurt or harm somebody else. Third thing is that the Lord is always consistent. Every time he shows up without a shadow of a doubt, you know it's Jesus. Look what he did. He didn't condemn Thomas. He didn't talk about Thomas. He didn't say, Thomas, you should have been here like the rest of them. He didn't say none of that. Jesus said, peace be unto you. He was talking to all of them. Peace be unto you. Then he said to Thomas, come on over here, son. And I got to break this point down to you because I believe that this is the way the Lord did it. It's kind of like what we do at communion. The pastor, we get in the presence of the Lord and we get the communion elements, amen, and we bless it, amen, and distribute it to the deacons and the deacons bring it out to you all, amen, for communion. And then y'all take the communion bread and the communion cup, symbolic of the body that was broken for you and the wine, amen, that was shed and blood for the remission of your sins. Yeah. And so what he did was, I believe the Lord did it like this. I believe on first Sunday, when he showed up in the midst of them, when he said unto them, peace be unto you, when he gave them the power of the Holy Ghost by breathing on them, and after he breathed on them, the Lord let them know that you need to start having forgiveness in your heart. Amen. And I believe that he didn't just hold it. When I first read it, I thought he held his hands up for a long time, Sister Queen. I thought all these years that the Lord brought Deacon Terry, he held his hands up to let them know uh, who he was and then he showed them his side. But I don't believe that, Mr. Slim. You know what I believe happened? I believe that he went to everybody. Just like the deacon served y'all familiar. He said, look right here, Deacon Woods, at the wounds that are in my hand. Look at here, Deacon Hayes, at the wounds that are in my hand. Look at here, Deacon Turner, for the wounds that are in my hand. Look at here, Deacon Smiles, for the holes that are in my hand. Look at that guy that was broken for you. And then when he showed up to Thomas, I believe he did the same thing. I believe he said, son, come here and look at the holes in my hand. Look at the holes in my side. Y'all still don't get it. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. And I know there was the blood of the same. One Friday, I was walking the streets of the Lord. 
and suffer. He got to allow you to go through some things. And God will show it out. Look at the nail prints in my hand. Look at my side. Pastor, I said, Pastor, look at the nail prints in my hand. Look at what he's done in my side. Jesus, I want to tell you, no matter what folk do, no matter what folks say, you got to always be a service for the Lord. What God has called you to do. Look at the prince in his hand. Look at that Christian in his side. Can I tell you that he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own and he tells me to have somebody else every day. Shall never be told. He healed my heart, he healed my hurt, he healed my body. He saved my life, he blessed my life, he blessed my children. He gave me a church full of people that would yes, love me but won't let me do anything. That's why I love you. Yes, 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 that back in the days before light bulbs, they twisted it was here, but there were no light bulbs. Mm -hmm. And folk would come into the church, and every single person mm -hmm. in the church would bring a candle. Uh -huh. I hope y'all with me. Yes. And the candle that they got, when they got to the door, they could spur, this is what they did. They took that candle, Sister Chloe, and lit that candle oh, with the main oh, candle. Yeah. Yes. And we know that Jesus is the light of the world, so that was said, why they were lighting that candle off of Jesus. Yeah, not preaching. Right. Right. Not the demons. Yeah. Not the devils. Yes. They were lighting it off of the Lord. Right. And Dr. Ray said that everybody that came to the church had a certain spot in the church. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all like that now. You know folk come and sit in y'all seat. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Ray said that that candle. Because there wasn't no light. In the daytime, it was like this. Light was shining in. But at night, there was no light. But if you had your candle, and you lit your candle, and you showed up in service, and sat in your spot, and the person beside you sat in that spot, the church would be lit up. But can I tell you that? If you miss church, that spot where you should have been going to be a dark place. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You have to come. Mm -hmm. And in the church, you ought to go this way you want you. And let your light so shine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If you're supposed to be on Dickens Road, let your light so shine. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You're a preacher? Yeah. Preach the word. Let your light so shine. Yeah. Yeah. Trustees were called to be honorable men, mm -hmm. women who would help build up the church. Yeah. Yeah. Let your light so shine. Yeah. Musicians, every time you hit that drum, every time you play that keyboard, every time you pluck that string, you let your light so shine. Yeah. Usher, who was standing on the door, yeah. you talking about so do thank you. You let your light so shine. Yeah. But Curtis, you don't even wait to come to church. You come in and you light your candle and you run back out with your candle and you stand there and you let the light. Going through trouble, yeah. going through pain, right. still got a smile on your face. Yeah. Still got a sweet yeah. spirit. And you light that candle up yeah. to allow people who cannot get here yeah. that they can know yes. that we're here. Yeah. Let our lights so shine. Yeah. 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 Can I tell you that wherever you are, you can let your light shine? Yeah. I let my light shine in here. Yeah. Call me to preach, I do the best I can, I let it go. But I told y'all when I was in the hospital and I was in some kind of pain, amen. And I said, God, so that you know, I said, Lord, if you let me get up out of this bed, All right. I promise you, right. I'm going to bless somebody in this hospital. Right. Brother Tom, I told you, I started doing it. He said, you can do it right now. When your family come in and see you, give them a word of encouragement. No matter how you feel, tell them you're all right anyway, because you are. Anyway, somebody. He said, go ahead on and encourage your wife.
wife, your children, your family, and all your church members that come to see you, and all your friends, they come to still and watch what I do for you. Then I go to Brother Deacon. I started encouraging my nurses. Those who come in in the morning, open in the morning, right. because you know how we are. But don't wake me up. I've been up all I can't go to sleep. Soon as I go to sleep, here you come. But I start blessing them sisters. I already had the light on. I say good morning to you. Ain't God good? Then you wake me up this morning, and by the time they got my blood, I didn't even know my blood was gone. They was just for praising the Lord, and I was praising them too. But then I tell you that I took it a little bit further. I'm going to tell you I took it a little bit further, because what I tell y'all, I promise you. If you get me up out of this bed, I'm going to bless somebody. For the first time the nurse said to me, you got to get up if you want to go home. I got my IV, I unplugged it, I wrapped the cord around it, and I walked up to the door. And I was pretty weak, and I stood there, and I said, Lord, give me some strength. Yeah, and I walked a little bit further, amen. I, I was tired, I had to stop a little bit. But when I got to that first room, brother was laying up in there, he was hurting pretty bad. And I walked into him, didn't know he was a preacher. He was tired, amen, somebody. I didn't know he was a preacher. But when I walked around the door and I turned, he said, good morning, preacher. That's what he said to me. He said, good morning, preacher. And I began to talk about to him about the goodness of God. Because I said to him, sometimes we talk to people about God, but we need God too. That brother said, I'm in the bed, amen. I walked over to him. I said, can I pray for you? He said, surely, put his hands out. We had a word of prayer. When I finished praying, Mr. Jerry, before I could say amen, that brother started praying for me. And when I got to the bed, he got to the nurse was at the door, the lobotomist was at the door, the orderly was at the door, food service was at the door, and we was having church inside of us alone. Get out of there, and let your life so shine. Wherever you are, wherever you are, I said, wherever you are. Show up. I'm done. I'm done. He'll show up. Is yes. that one who will allow God to come to your heart? When He breathed on them, He breathed the Holy Spirit in them. Y'all remember what He said to them in the 16th chapter? In this world, you will have tribulation. Be a good cheer. I have overcome the world. I don't want to leave it, but I got to go because when I go, Comforter gonna come. Amen. Lord have mercy. The comforter gonna come. Yes. Have anybody ever had the comforter to come in the midnight hour when your body was hurting so bad and you just needed a little comfort and all of a sudden God just showed up? Oh, yes. Have you ever waited for somebody yes. to call you who you knew yes. would call you and see about you but you didn't know they was going through something and the Lord just came and saw about you? Yes. Have you ever been ready to quit? Ever been ready to give up? Ever been ready to stop? And all of a sudden, the Lord just show up. Yeah. When he show up, yeah. he'll show out. Yeah. Doors of the church is open. Church is open. If anybody wants to give their life yeah. to the Lord, this is a good time to do it. Yes, sir. Yeah. He'll show up. Yeah. He'll show up. Yeah. That's fine. We can all say we go have prayer. We go into the house. Come can I tell you, he didn't do me like he did Thomas, y'all. Yes. God showed up to me, standing in my yard. Amen. Yes, he did. You know, I've been talking to me in church several times. And I was committed to the church, then I went to a guard place. You heard me, David? I went to a guard place. And I remember my great grandma saying, whatever get in trouble, I don't to do a call on the Lord. I said, Lord, I need you. I said, Lord, if you don't help me, I'm going to die down here. And all of a sudden, I was so, my mind was just, oh yeah, let's say, not when I came to church, right then, I was a different man from that point on. I started running down the road. I turned around and I ran back up the road. I turned around and I ran, and I was running. I was running, and I was running, and I was running, and I didn't realize I was running for the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, I got to say, listen to me, I got to say, and I stopped running. I stopped, literally stopped. I said, people are back up crazy. I know that I lost my mind. I hear running up and down the yard. And Miss Emma Boone was standing on her porch. She said to me, God got you. She said, we finally 
got you. She said, I'm so glad that God got you. That's what I want to tell y'all before I leave today. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you've been through, God got you. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, I sure do thank you for another first Sunday. I sure do thank you, Lord, for another revolution around the sun. Another opportunity, Lord, to preach your gospel. Another opportunity to see your people. Another opportunity, Lord, to know that you are still in the blessing business. God, there's somebody here in the sound of my voice that's going through a hard time, going through struggles, tribulation, and trouble. God, I ask you to come and see about them, Lord. I ask you to walk in the midst of their situation and stand before them and greet them with peace be unto you. Yes. Then I pray, Lord, you will breathe the power of your Holy Spirit on them. And then they will have the power to forgive other people. And then they will be free to let that light shine. Yes. God, I tell you that I do love you. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Lord, you are worthy to be praised. Yes. God, I so do thank you for blessing and keeping me. I ask the Lord to bless each individual person, to give them strength, to give them endurance, to give them healing, and to give them hope. Bless this here, God, this awaiting congregation as we get ready to leave this place, but not from your presence. Now I want to hear who they will. Lord, have mercy to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the throne of his glory. God, again, we sure do thank you. And I say this to your church, and we will leave, Lord, but never from you. Walk with us, talk with us, and be with us. Now may the love of God the Father, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the sweet commitment of the Holy Spirit, may he rest, rule, and abide henceforth, now and forevermore. Put your hands together and let both know what Jesus so Thank you.